All right, so let's bring in now uh, Blas Nunez Nieto. He is the Assistant Secretary of Border and Immigration Policy at the Department of Homeland Security. Sir, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you saw that, but you certainly heard some of it. Um, what do you make of the question of where have the migrants gone? Chris Cuomo was asking it. Is, is catch and release happening, sir? So what I can tell you is that obviously in the days leading up to the lifting of Title 42, we saw uh, a surge in migration and uh, we're averaging about 10,000 encounters a day between our ports of entry. In the three days uh, since uh, we returned to our traditional Title 8 authorities at the border, we've seen less than half that many encounters, averaging, uh, you know, a little less than uh, 5,000 encounters a day. You know, we attribute that reduction in encounters uh, to the new consequences that are in place at the border uh, under uh, Title Eight processing, and that right. includes obviously our circumvention of lawful pathways rule, which places what we think are some common sense conditions on uh, asylum eligibility at the border. And it also uh, is the result of enforcement actions being taken by our partner governments in Mexico, Guatemala, Colombia, and Panama. I, I, I want to get into the numbers in a second um, and, and ask you about it. But again, back to that question, you know, Chris is down there on the border talking about people being given envelopes and, and court dates. Um, what is exactly happening, sir? Is is parole happening? Is catch and release happening like, like we uh, are seeing down there? What would the Biden administration say? So, yeah, obviously we are uh, under uh, a court order that limits our use of parole uh, out of our border patrol facilities, and we are abiding by that uh, court order. But it's important to note, frankly, that you know, that authority has been used by presidents from both uh, parties in order to expedite processing out of our border patrol facilities when we have dangerously overcrowded conditions. So we view that as a, as a very harmful ruling. You know, regardless of how individuals are released from our custody, whether it's uh, via parole or a notice to appear, every non-citizen we process is thoroughly vetted against national security and public safety uh, databases before uh, being released. And any individual that is dangerous to the community, you know, individuals with arrest warrant, individuals who may have ties to terrorism are you know, detained and not released. You know, I, I want to show uh, or at least mention what's what's on the screen right now. This is a live picture of Brownsville, Texas. And what you can see is hundreds, if not thousands of people on both sides of the border there, U.S. side and Mexico side. So um, what, what numbers are you anticipating here in the upcoming days? And do you expect there to be an end or is this just kind of life as we know it along the southern border? in the upcoming days, weeks, and months, sir? So, you know, I, I would tell you that the situation on the border is obviously very fluid, and we are closely monitoring, you know, what's happening on both sides of the border. We know that there are still, obviously, thousands of people uh, in Mexico who are waiting and watching to see, you know, uh, how things play out on uh, the border. But I'd also note, you know, as I think one of your correspondents noted earlier, that, you know, what we are seeing today is really different than what we've seen in the past. We are seeing, you know, migratory flows from uh, all over the hemisphere, including countries that are difficult uh, to remove individuals to, like Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, countries that have dictatorships and that we don't have diplomatic relations with. And so, you know, we believe that we've put forward, you know, what we think is a common sense approach to dealing with this challenge within our statutory authorities that combines, you know, incentives and lawful pathways for people to come directly to the U.S. in a you know, safe, orderly manner with stiff consequences for those who, you know, cross unlawfully despite having those options available. You know, you mentioned the numbers. In the days leading up to the end of Title 42, there were, on average, basically 10,000 people a day for four consecutive days. Blue on the left there, that was pre-Title 42. Since Title 42 expired, the numbers have been dropping. Um, basically to where levels were in January, February, and March. It, are you able to, to define success, sir, in any way? And is that bar at the right there when you're talking about 5,000 a day? Is that success? You know, by, I will be frank, by historical 
uh, standards, that's still you know a relatively high number of encounters. Obviously, again, what we're seeing over the last few years is a fundamental change in migration. But I'll, I'll be honest, you know, you we're seeing these surges in migration happening with increasing regularity now for over you know two decades under presidents of both parties. Presidents from both parties have used executive actions to try to deal with this challenge. We have right. as well. You know, we believe we are innovatively using our current authorities in order to deal with the challenge. But there's no lasting solution here that doesn't involve a bipartisan effort in Congress to reform our hopelessly outdated immigration laws. All right, sir, I have to leave it there. Thank you for joining us. We hope you do again. Blas Nunez Neto of the Department of Homeland Security. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.